massage therapist and a corrective exercise specialist. I'm going to teach you guys how to do a squat today, specifically a high bar squat, okay? Um, I would say a few things that I do before warming up for any kind of squat is glute activation, specifically glute max, which is the one on the bottom. It's your most powerful external rotator, and I find that it gets you in and out the hole with best support for your back. Another thing I like to do too is making sure you fold below the quads, which is the front muscles, because you don't want to feel like you're falling forward in the squat. You want to make sure that it, it's actually working uh, efficiently, but it's not overworking. So I warmed up just a little bit. Um, just wanted to show you this way with via demonstration. So one thing you gotta understand is don't push weight. I mean, it's not that we're trying to find out PRs. I literally, my focus is form and obviously muscle build, uh, definition and building. I mean, I can find people that squat heavy but have no ass. My two cents. So what I find is if you have strong muscles, developed muscles, obviously it'll carry you forward. You don't find pockets of compensation or imbalances. What did I miss up on? So Why can you help me on? In. Okay, so first of all, if you notice at the bottom of the squat, he kind of dips in, right? If you, I, I don't even know if I can mimic it, but he kind of comes in and it scoops under. So anytime you see the butt winking under, it usually means the hip flexors are tight. So what I would need him to do prior is actually to foam roll the quads, make sure you get deep into the stretch, so you're getting to the, uh, to the hip flexor. Bring this cut straight. Make sure that this quad is packed. So that way you can get really deep in. As a force massage therapist, there's other ways that I can get in via manual therapy. Um, another thing that he could do to help his quad is at the bottom, I want him to pause. See at the bottom, he'll be able to engage his glutes and fire all the hole. So the fact that at the bottom he winks in and out shows me his hip flexors are too tight and his glute maximus specifically is probably not fired enough or engaged to get him deep down in the hole and to get out. Instead he's re uh, relying on his hip flexors to kind of slingshot him in and out. He did a great job with I think keeping his torso a little straight. From the beginning I didn't like that he over arched. I would think that if he kept his core tight from the beginning, he'd be able to brace his core and he'd be able to hold more weight. He might have been able to do five reps instead of the three. So a misconception about foam rolling is that usually people start off with the hamstrings or the back. It's easier for them, they can put body weight on top of it. Um, I usually actually listen for what they tell me first. If they tell me they foam roll the quad first, I know in my head, bravo, because that's actually the number one spot I find that most people need their foam rolling. With now, I mean, people are sitting down via work or uh, from traffic, etc., or from overuse of quad dominant, um, they're more quad dominant and they don't exactly engage the maximus like I'd want them to. So we'll go ahead and start the foam roll. I do a little bit extra. I start the anterior part of my ankles. I find that because this proportion part right here, I can actually get really deep in the squat. If, imagine someone's really tight. Imagine how they're actually up here. But because of my mobility, I can sit down here comfortably. So, foam roll here. And I take my time. I actually flatten myself into it so I can put my body weight. And then for me, because I'm more flexible, I just dip in. <laughs> And then from the side, if you can see, I'm getting the top of my quads, but I'm also stretching out my back, my QL, my hips. And then because I'm flexible, I can jump into straight into this. So the hip flexor stretch, also quad stretch. And I mean, not many people are this flexible. You can turn around to the side, get adductors. This is also something, if you find that someone has knee valgus, they're turning in in their squat, it's normally because their adductors are really tight. 
In truth, because of the glute maximus being an external rotator, you want your feet slightly turned out. In that case, just like this, you can see this is glute max, this is more quad dominant. And unfortunately, if people are too much quad, it'll get into adductor and you'll see people squatting like this. I said I did not know that. Yeah, so in your case, I need you to really get into the hip flexors as much as you can. You don't have to get, you can't really get the foam roller in there. Um, you can also cheat and use something like a medicine ball because it'll give you a little bit more inches. It'll probably come up here. So some of my athletes that are not as mobile, I help them cheat a little bit and I'll help them get in. So another mistake people do is they only go to the belly of the muscle when I need you to go to the origin of the muscle. Now that is where hip flexor is. You have magnus, you have pectineus, um, all these important muscles for the hip flexor group, adductor group. Another thing too is you get TFL, which is on the side, it's a pocket muscle. Another thing people don't know is that the IT band connects to the TFL and the glute max. If the TFL is not loosened, then of course the IT band follows closely to the TFL and not to glute maximus. So you'll find that when people are squatting, they rely on this pocket muscle as opposed to this muscle. So when they're coming in, just like him, he almost slingshot and used more quad, hip flexor, when in truth, it should be full body. All right. So we'll see what he can do with a little bit of home ride. Alright guys, so it's already, I'm already stretched out, so we're gonna go ahead and see uh, how we do on this one. So let's see. this video um, there's more to the squat than excludes ankle mobility uh, quad mobility etc I mean the importance of hamstrings the importance of core bracing breath uh, lats even um, with direction of a head angle because obviously some people like to have it up and down so this is just a short, short snippet what I find that most people have problems with uh, when they're starting off squats so if you can start off with these few little tips I mean you're setting yourself a great foundation for your uh, high bar squat so. all right so it was a it was a blast I learned a lot of stuff about her that I didn't even know and now I can go ahead and uh, put that into my clients as well and you guys can also follow her on her Instagram I'll go ahead and put it right over here and go ahead and, and down there too in the, in the description so thanks guys thank you very much and uh, thank you very much again yeah of course thank you thank, <laughs> thank you so much All right. bye guys